Today's American story with Bob Dotson is a fish tale that's not about the one that got away. Bob found this poignant story aboard a small boat in the Columbia River near Astoria, Oregon. Dave Densmore has fished all his life upon a sea that took his family. My son and my dad were uh, uh, drowned when, on my son's 14th birthday. When they set out in a boat no bigger than this for a 10 minute cruise on a beautiful day, disappeared while Skeeter's birthday cake was baking in the oven. I found my dad the next day floating, but I never did find my son. For 20 years, the fisherman felt compelled to write a poem about his family's tragedy. Dave searched for words like he searched for salmon. But poetry is seldom written looking out. It's written looking in. Writing is memory, not moment. Dave Densmore's poetry begins with a lump in the throat. The anguish is a search I can't begin to tell. Alone on the water, he would dial up a quiet channel on his ship's radio and read what he wrote. I've already been to hell. Why have you spent your life on the sea that took your father and your son? It wasn't the ocean's fault. It, uh, it was just part of life. I never put any blame on the ocean. It, uh, and I still love the ocean. How did poetry help you heal? It's like opening up a wound and letting it heal from the inside out. Some who heard that lonely voice encouraged Dave to tell them more. For half a century, he has earned his living off the coast of Alaska. One time in the Bering Sea, your boat caught fire. Mm -hmm. We were in a life raft for four days, four nights. Roaring, hissing breakers like to stop your heart. Sometimes they go right over and fill that raft with liquid ice. Your stay wire is going to stop it up forward then, kind of? Yeah. An old shipmate, Gino Leach, asked Dave to read what he wrote at a gathering of fisher poets. But the thought of facing an audience frightened him more than that raft in winter. Why do you suppose he did survive? You know, he'd ride ashore in a plastic coffee cup or he'd find a way. Gino should know. Dave gave him his first job. How is writing poetry like catching fish? <laughs> Pretty elusive. <laughs> I lost some pretty good ones because I wasn't fast enough with my pen. You mean the rhyme got away? The rhyme got away. I've had quite a few get away. Fishermen were poets before there were pens. They told their stories in rhyme because it was easier to remember. What has poetry taught you about life you didn't expect? Paradise isn't really anywhere special. It's right there. It's in your head and your heart. And if you can find it there, well, then you're all right. That revelation was the hook that finally reeled Dave Densmore onto a stage. I'm gonna try and sneak David Densmore in here for a, for a quick one here. He's, All those who used to listen to up. him cast stories over the water, listen to him breathe when he forgot what he wanted to say, held their breath. Well, it's been said I'm just a fisherman, not really a poet at all, but here's a guarantee to all of you, the highs, the lows, the fear, the love, I've lived, and I'm telling it true. Thank you. Dave need not have worried. He's a poem just looking at him. For today, Bob Dotson, NBC News, with an American story in Astoria, Oregon. That's a terrific story. And now here's Ann. Today's Top Chef is brought to you by Sears. Thanks, David. Well, this morning on today's Top Chef, we all know that children can be incredibly picky eaters and getting them to eat fish is never easy. But that was the latest elimination challenge for the remaining aspiring chefs on last night's episode of the reality series Top Chef on Bravo. Does anybody like pizza? <laughs> what about fish? Yeah. Would you like to see what a monkfish looks like? Yeah. Yeah. Our team is preparing the monkfish nuggets. We're making cheesy tater tots. We've also made a strawberry applesauce. Red team, I'm in you.